Welcome back, and in this lesson, we'll review the stock-based compensation. Stock-based compensation is a popular form of compensation that companies give their employees apart from their salaries. Most companies grant equity to employees to increase employee engagement and align their interests with the company's interest. The most common stock-based compensations are stock options, restricted stocks, and restricted stock units. The usage of stock-based compensation has significantly increased since the 90s, primarily because of the proliferation of technology startups. Usually, these technology startups have limited cash resources, and they have to use stock-based compensation to attract and retain talent. As we said, one of the popular forms of stock-based compensation is stock options. Stock options give the right to an employee to purchase the stock at an exercise price, which is given in the stock option agreement. The stock options are exercisable usually after a vesting period. Exercisable means that an employee can purchase the stock as per the stock option terms. Vesting means the transfer of the right to exercise the option. The vesting can happen at a certain point in time or gradually over a period of time. For example, a company may grant a stock option to its employee with a vesting schedule of three years, and the option may vest the following way. 30% vests in the first year, 30% vests in the second year, and remaining options vest in the third year. The most common vesting requirement is holding time. However, apart from the holding time, the vesting can be linked to individual performances, such as completing a certain project or achieving certain sales numbers. Typically, stock options can be exercised over a period of time after they have vested. So, for example, once the stock options vest, we may have one year, two years, or three years to purchase the stock at the agreed price. Grant date, vesting, and exercise period can all sound confusing for those who are not familiar with stock options. So, a simple way to explain those terms is to put those events on a timeline. So here, we've got a simple timeline, and the first event is the grant of stock options to an employee. Once the stock options are granted, the vesting period begins, which is typically based on a holding period and sometimes on individual performance. Once stock options vest, they become exercisable, which means an employee can purchase the stock from the company at exercise price during this exercise period. The exercise period has an end date, and when the exercise period ends, the options expire. Stock options can be out of the money, at the money, or they can be in the money. So the out of the money option is when the exercise price is higher than the current share price on the market. If you think about it, when the exercise price in the stock option agreement is higher than the current market price of the stock, then it simply doesn't make sense to exercise this option because you can simply go to the market and purchase the stock on the market. Therefore, stock options are called out of the money because it doesn't make sense to exercise them. The at the money option is when the exercise price is equal to the current market price of the stock. Still, it doesn't make sense for the holder of stock options to exercise at the money options because the options holder doesn't gain anything by exercising his options. And finally, in the money option is when the exercise price is less than the current market price of the stock. So this is when it makes sense for the employee to purchase the stock from the company. Because after purchasing the stock at the exercise price, he can sell it on the market and there will be a gain from this transaction. Exercising stock options results in stock issuance and increase in shares outstanding and decrease in earnings per share, other things being equal. So let's review the impact of the stock option on the earnings per share. The impact of the stock options on the EPS depends on the type of the EPS. Stock options don't impact the basic EPS. So when companies report basic EPS, they don't include the stock options in the calculation of the basic EPS. However, in the money stock options are included in the diluted EPS calculations when companies report the diluted EPS. Here we've got the footnote to Airbnb's 10K report for the year 2020, which provides details about the stock options that Airbnb grants to its employees. Companies in the U.S. are required to report the share-based compensation details in their annual reports. 
Note that Airbnb reports that there were 41.4 million stock options outstanding at the end of 2020. The weighted average exercise price of those stock options is 12.48. Not all of these 41.4 million stock options outstanding are exercisable. In the table below, details are provided on the number of stock options that are exercisable, which is 36.7 million, with a weighted average price of 8.6. So, using this information, we can calculate the additional shares that can be issued if these options are exercised. Often, we need to do this type of analysis when we're carrying out company valuation.